Namaste and welcome. In our program, Yoga for Unity and Wellbeing, 100 days towards the International Day of Yoga, we will be exploring in a wellness webinar just how important parenting is as we move towards commemorating the United Nations World Parenting Day. We ask ourselves a question, what is it to be a parent? Most of us have had moments in our lives when we've asked ourselves questions, am I being a good parent? You know, um, is my child going to turn out right? So we asked two experts to come together and discuss this question. And let's learn from them and see what they have to share with us. We have Mary Wheatley from Hawaii, who is a conscious parenting instructor and expert and Sarah Weiss, who is a kids yoga instructor. They have a lot of tricks in their bags and they are ready to share it with us in this most instructive and interesting discussion. Let's join them and we hope you enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. We are looking at the Global Parenting Day or the Global Parents Day as it is called. And here we are to discuss what is the most important uh, issue what we all are facing. There's a big slowdown which is happening because of the pandemic. And parenting has become such a challenge. A big, biggest challenge I can say of the decade is parenting because the kids are with you. You're supposed to work from home. You're supposed to take care of the housework. You're supposed to take care of the kids and your job. Needless to say, how do we go about it? How do we do things with a smile on the face, with happiness in the heart and joy, which is very, very important. So we have two very beautiful women here today who are going to share their experiences with us and their expertise with us. We have the first speaker, this is Mary Wheatley. And Mary has been, has jumped into this profession, as I can say, she is a parenting coach and she has a bag of tricks which she can tell us to keep the, to keep the kids engaged alongside uh, with what we are doing at home. So she works to inspire us. She works to inspire us as parents and to make the journey of parenting really, really wonderful. So we have Mary with us. Mary, uh, we welcome you to this webinar. We thank you for accepting our invitation and we look forward to learning a lot from you. And we have Sara. Sara is going to lead us through the yoga for kids, which is the need for the time, the need for the moment, carpe diem, as we say, we can seize that moment and we can definitely use the tricks which Sara has. So we will go to the yoga bit a little bit later and we start with Mary. Mary, I think you should state before even I can introduce you. I was very, very impressed by the fact that why you chose to become a, a, a coach for the parents. It's very, it's a very different uh, profession. Like I'm a life coach. I'm a woman empowerment coach. But to become a parenting coach, how did you choose that? Well, um, I'll just correct you a little bit because it's not necessarily a parenting coach, it's a parent coach. So it's not so much of a how to for um, parents, not how to do things, although today I'm going to suggest some things for parents. But um, it, parent coach um, actually helps parents to understand the value of who they are and the gifts that they offer the world that they offer their children. Because many times parents sit in isolation of who they are because they're giving so much of themselves to others. Um, so I, like a life coach in similar ways, remind parents of their value, remind them of their gifts that they bring to the world and um, encourage them to take those newer understandings of who they truly are into their parenting for a better parenting experience. Um, what brought me into parent coaching was um, I actually had a daughter um, who is now an adult and she had difficulties in her youth. And I did not understand at the time what was going on for her. And I have a design background, a very creative person. And that was really where I was at. That's where my education was initially. 
And because I had no answers and I didn't know who to turn to for help with what I didn't understand, um, I, a lot of frustration came, um, you know, boiled up within me and I became less of an effective parent, less of an effective mother because I didn't have someone like myself to remind me that I really was a good parent and I really was a good mother and that much of the, the gifts that I had, I just wasn't, um, I wasn't utilizing. I wasn't even sitting in awareness of, of how I could take the best of who I am, bring it to this challenging situation and overcome the situation. So there was a lot of conflict within that. So at one point in time, I was sitting in Shavasana after a yoga class and I was looking, I was searching. And what came to me from what I believe to be truly spirit was this phrase, parent coach. So I went home to my computer and I searched out parenting coach, much like you had mentioned before. And I didn't find anything, but I found parent coach. And I was like, wow, that's pretty remarkable. So I went from there. So from there, I found a program that was very much in alignment with who I was. And it opened me up to a whole new world of understanding <clears throat> the role of parents and the value of parents. And so that's that's kind of like the, the elevator story of my backdrop background. <laughs> Excuse me. That's really a wonderful uh, journey. And uh, as a developmental therapist, I, I uh, interact with parents who are who parent atypical children. And I know that this journey, even if it's typical or atypical, is very. It's a journey and it's a responsibility. So in the past uh, one year, I can say one year and plus a few months, the journey has not been a very smooth journey. All of us know we are down and we are actually, it's like a PTSD. So what do you think are the major challenges which our parents are facing uh, during this phase? Well, in my experience and in my working with, other, with parents uh, more recently through this world pandemic, um, the greatest challenge has been the slowdown because for most of our lives, for most of our parent, for most of parent and family lives, they've been used to running around, getting themselves to work, getting the kids to school, after school activities, social interactions, um, school events, and, and all of that. And all of a sudden that came to a halt. So now there's this great parenting slowdown. And within that, there's a great deal more family interaction as everybody's working under the same roof, whether it be school or schoolwork or um, working at home and every other activity under the sun is all under the same roof. So there can be this contagion of boredom, low energy and irritability that happens within this dynamic. And oftentimes it can be, it can fuel conflict. So I think that that's been one of the biggest um, uh, effects of being in this new, new reality for families. Very truly, as you said, Mary, it is the question of more space and less space. So having a less space and all of us within that space has become very, very challenging. And also not having the, not the kids not having the freedom to move around and to give a channel to their energies is becoming a challenge for the parents. Uh, the parents are also not coming to terms that the basic fact what can create well-being in the house is creating a space of well-being within themselves. It is like I'm sitting here, I'm feeling the breeze of the fan, I'm feeling good. It's a very good you know, situation to be in. That's because I am good inside, I'm feeling happy. But I'm sure if I feel stressed inside, I'll feel everything around is not good around me. So this is what I continue to tell the parents who come to me that your well-being is very, very important when you're looking at the well-being of your kids. And kids are connected to us. My, my kid may be miles away from me. She's in US now. But I'm sure the moment I feel a little bit thing, thing, thing inside, she also feels it because we are connected. So how, how would you tell the parents and what should the parents do to enhance their own well-being? 
Well, I would first remind parents that happiness and joy is their birthright just as much as it is the birthright of their children. And with that, um, it's really important, and parents have heard this, but it's very important for parents to take care of themselves first because sharing an empty cup is futile. Nobody is filled from an empty cup. So, um, you know, the pandemic has really offered us a great opportunity to reassess things that are important to us in our lives. And there's a host of them. But within the family, um, being more present for, for our family is, is one of the things that we can do. I mean, it's right in our face every single day. So you have a choice of either interacting in that new dynamic in that, well, I shouldn't say new dynamic, but in that new reality, or, or not. And I think that um, for moms and dads, there's a couple of things that they can do that could help one another to be more present to this role as, of parenting. So for example, moms in the morning perhaps can um, take a little bit of time for themselves, whether it be to have a cup of tea, coffee, to meditate, perhaps put on a little bit of makeup before they start their day. But they can't just jump into that. So they need support. So they have to ask their partner. They have to ask dad. They have to ask whoever the other primary caregiver in the household is for that time in the morning so that they can you know, set themselves up, energize themselves for the demands of their day. And I know that sounds pretty awkward, especially for mothers, because mothers are so used to being multitaskers. But I promise you that once you do that and that and your partner responds in kind, it, it, it sets up a beautiful connection between the two of you. Now it works both ways. Dads should be able to, or are encouraged to ask of their partner, to give them some time so that they can have some me time and do a reset. What's so beautiful is that when parents give one another this gift of time, it actually builds their relationship. It builds a connection and there's mutual appreciation, mutual respect, and there's an energy in that. And that energy actually carries over into your parenting tasks that are before you for the day or the week. So I think that one true way of ensuring parent well-being is parents to truly ask, ask for what you need. Don't feel selfish in asking for it. Don't, you know, overindulge in it, but take that time that you need in order to like restore yourself before you can give to somebody else. Because again, you cannot give from an empty cup. I'm, I'm really uh, in with what you say. And I always tell the parents this, if someone wants uh, a big amount of money from me, just now, someone just pops in and says, give me a crore of rupees. I don't have it with me. I just don't have it with me. So it, it's the same with uh, everything. To give joy, I think it has to emanate. It has to reflect from within. So parents have to understand that they are being joyful and happy is very essential and as we treat our uh, jobs at office, like I would go to my hospital, as you said, with well-dressed, even though I wear a scrub nowadays and nothing else, but even to you know, wear that scrub, I, I feel that, okay, even a little bit here and there, I should look good because I feel good when I dress up a little bit. So yes, dressing up is a very important thing. I think doning the role of a parent, it's very important to actually get into the role and to enhance that role by practicing few things. Meditation is very important because it gives you that alignment, that centering, which is required. And once you get centered, I'm sure whatever happens during the day, you are well equipped to take care of the situation. So that, that's the morning part of it. And that, as the day goes, so in the evening, when you come back, uh, what about uh, family time? What do you suggest should be the activities uh, which parents should follow to get that family time together? I always tell the parents that you all have to have family time. Keep that mobile aside. Don't carry that stupid gadget with you wherever you go. And especially when the kids are around, it is with the kids that you should be not with that gadget. So in the evenings, Mary, can you suggest what the parents should do 
when they come back to have a very good and happy family time? Well, a couple of things come to mind with that question. And I think that um, encouraging and valuing connection within your family is very important, much like I suggested with the, um, the last um, response that I gave you, because if when parents value connection with one another, value they're showing a value and a respect for one another. And that's really, really um, the core to um, healthy family, healthy relationships is this, this connection piece. So um, I think that um, when you take the time to turn off your devices, like you suggested, you have to take the time to turn off those devices as well. And that's a great time to engage in conversation uh, or even just quiet time with your loved ones in the same space. It doesn't even have to be like, okay, it's, it's time to shut off the devices. Let's get, you know, let's have a really heavy duty conversation. Well, your older children may not, they'll be like, no way, I'm not going there at all, right? But just the fact that you've removed the devices from the centerpiece of the, of the space everybody else's energy is being read, right? We know if somebody's hungry or hangry, we know if somebody's happy, we know if somebody's irritable, you know, it's, it, you can read, you're much more tuned into the people around you and the energy of the people that are around you. So that's, that's building connection. Um, I think that in, a, in, in response to that too, it also shows everyone in the household that they have value. I value you enough to give you my time and to give you my attention without distraction, right? And there's nothing more than any of that any human being anybody wants than to be feel valued, to be feel feel heard, to be feel to feel as though um, they have a place, you know. So um, I think again, going just nurturing that connection with the family offers so many great life lessons that not only can shore up the relationships within the household, but they can also shore up the relationships outside of the household. Um, the other thing that um, I would say um, in in nurturing connection with family and within the household and evening times or whenever you can find time for your your children. Um, when you do that, you teach your children that they can have time with themselves and that sitting in quiet is okay, right? So turning off the device, and we don't do that often. We're always distracted. So even if the devices are off and you're in the household together and you're not interacting with one another, parents don't feel as though you have to entertain your children all the time. Don't feel your children have to be entertained all the time. There is a really a great benefit of learning how to be with yourself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, do you agree with that? Or do you, I mean, I know for me that that's been one of the greatest gifts of pandemic is learning how to be quiet and be with myself because that's happened so often, right? I completely resonate with you. I completely resonate when you say this and uh, very, very uh, few people realize or you know, it's, it's become some sort of addiction. The mobile or the iPad or the laptop becomes a part of you. And, uh, you know, you can imagine if someone just takes away your mobile just to take a number, you feel like, when is that person giving it back to me? We have become so addicted. To it. So it's very important for all of us as parents to keep that device aside and be with each other and be with the most important person in our life and that is ourselves. And the yeah. kids also should be uh, geared towards this, being with yourself so that that gift you can offer to the world, which the world can see, which the world can interact. So uh, Mary, the next question to you is, uh, what are the different types of activities you'd like to teach? Because they don't know what to do. I mean, okay, you tell me devices to be kept aside. What after that? You know? What do I do with my kids now? So that's the next step. Can you tell uh, us a few? <laughs> I have a list. But I'll just start by um, just inviting parents as well as primary caregivers in the, in the family dynamic to tune in to some of the suggestions that I have. And, and one specific for little children is to really get down to eye level with them and talk with them so that they see you at eye level, not as this domineering, overpowering, 
large human that's going to, you know, tell them what to do. So when you get down at eye level with your children, you actually give them the opportunity to feel seen. And that's really, really powerful, right? Um, the other thing you could do with older children is um, uh, give them a say in daily activities, interact with them, open up a conversation that allows them for input and take some of the suggestions that they have Maybe they're very simple. What is it that we're going to make for lunch or who's going to prepare lunch? Anything. And, and bring that into the day and show them that their ideas, their thoughts have value. And um, you might be very surprised at some of the ideas that they come up with. So um, those are some of the, the basic things that I would say. Uh, more specific things, um, I'll just go through some of, the, I like to call these mindful games. Um, and one of them um, I'd like to begin with is creating, um, designing and sharing affirmation cards. Um, and I know that Sarah's going to come um, you know, on a little bit later and she's going to share some of her yoga pose cards, which are just so beautifully done. And, but there are some that you can buy for older children. They may want a pre-printed version of it. They're, they've come out in the market very much uh, in abundance lately. But within the household, you could use it, an index card or a piece of paper or what have you. And this can be done at any age where children can articulate their feelings. So a daily affirmation card might, might begin with an I am statement. And an I am statement followed by something positive that they know to be true about themselves. And parents do the same thing. So for example, you could say, I am thoughtful, I am beautiful, I am kind, I am loved. I am loving. So you get the idea. And you can color these, write them down as simplistically or as elaborately as you feel that, you know, your family wants to wants to create. And then every once in a while, pull one of these cards. Maybe you pull it in the morning and you have a daily ref reflection with your children on what's going to be their, their, their PowerPoint for the day, you know, so they can reflect on that when they feel bored or something to that effect. You know, it just it raises the energy, builds self-awareness and um, it, it encourages um, the individual's awareness of their individuality. And it works just as well for the parent as it does for the child. And it's, it's a very empowering practice. So that's something you could do with downtime. Um, another very fun activity is to have everyone close their eyes, take a piece of paper and tear this piece of paper into a random animal shape. And each day or whatever you're going to do this, somebody picks a different animal. It'll never become the animal that it was supposed to be. It'll always look like something rather awkward. But what it does is it builds conversation. It builds um, uh, humor, people will, you know, the, the family members laugh and they, you learn to laugh at yourself because maybe brother is laughing at how silly sister's, you know, torn paper animal, animal is, but at the same time, it becomes, it's okay to laugh. It's okay to laugh with one another. It's okay to laugh with yourself. So there's many beautiful lessons that are learned with that, within that. Um, another thing that parents can do for children is, in, is encourage storytelling, story, story sharing. So you go around in the circle um, and you and somebody picks a topic for the day. So maybe it's the snowman or, or maybe it's um, the bird in the sky. It could be anything random. And once upon a time, and then everybody adds a sentence to this story. And what you're going to do is you, what you're going to find is that the story kind of morphs and moves and changes depending on who's adding content to it. And it, it, some will be more humorous, some will be scary, some will be more serious. Um, and it just, again, it's a, it's a connection building exercise for family members. Um, so that's fun. And another fun one is something called uh, pass the cup. So you pass a cup of water in the circle, around the circle, eyes are closed and um, family members pass it from one to the other without spilling it. Now, are they going to spill it? Of course they are. Is that a reason for somebody to get upset with the other one? It could be, but potentially we know we have the potential to get wet. So it's another opportunity to laugh, to be in forgiveness um, uh, and to be in acceptance. Then that's a really difficult thing for some children to learn. But if they're learning, okay, I got wet, no big deal. 
because it isn't a big deal, it was part of the game, then, then it, it has a beautiful outcome for their understanding of who they are. Like I can get wet and I don't have to get angry about it, right? I don't have to do that knee jerk reaction. Um, family dance parties are another fun thing to do. Somebody's got the iPhone or with the music on or whatever device that they use for music and they pick the genre. And, you know, it's an old game that we used to do when I was a kid at parties and you would just, someone would turn the music on, everybody would dance and all of a sudden, whoever's at the controls would turn the music off and dancing would stop. It's fun, it's funny, it builds connection and laughter and joy within the household. So there's just a lot of things you can do that can build, you know, these, these relationships beyond, um, you know, going outside and spending a lot of money, which we haven't had an opportunity to do all this time when the pandemic has been happening, right? Um, and the last few things that I would just suggest is, um, Possibly during the day, invite your children to take five minutes of quiet. And we talked about this a little bit, just a little bit of quiet. And in order to encourage young children to do that, you can like, you know, set a timer or just challenge them to whoever can sit, who can sit quiet the longest, right? And just see who wins that battle, you know? And it, what it does is it's kind of an invitation for them to learn how to be with themselves. Yeah, as, as we spoke about before. Um, at nighttime, it's a great time to um, share gratitude, gratitude for what happened in the day, something wonderful that happened in the day. And in the morning, it's a wonderful time to feel, to share visions of hope, hope for what they want to accomplish in the day or what they would like to experience or what have you. So of course, there's always family yoga with Sarah. And um, I know she's going to be sharing that with us next. And so family yoga or yoga of any sort for individual or children is an excellent way to build strong connections with yourself as well as your children. So um, those are some of my, you know, little have fun with it kind of things without the devices. <laughs> I think a, a family game, like a parachute, having a parachute, a simple towel and keeping some object and saying, Come on, let's go up and down and up and down and let's see what comes out of it. Magic. So something yeah. like that can also help the family. Just build that energy bit of it, which is required. Maybe we can dance on the newspaper, like all the party games, which you think are party games can be definitely played at home and play such an important part of life, whether it is board games, whether it is physical games, whether it is playing tug of war, it's fun as a sensory integration therapist I always tell parents that to use simple things what you have like what you mentioned about tearing paper using shaving foam just to you know have the feel of the 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 tactile bit of it what do I feel when I rub my hand on the shaving foam or what do I, what do I feel when I actually put my hand into the pot of mud and take it and do the planting together so let's do a plant together let's Let's see what's happening to our plant. Let's say hello to our plant. I think these are little moments which parents can take out. Or maybe even if the child loves water, then having a good washing the clothes together sort of a thing can be done together. So it can be work and it can be fun, which can be done together at home. So that, that's wonderful, Mary. I mean, it was great to have had you today. And I look forward to having the journey together. Not that this is just a starting bit of it, but we need to actually have parenting or looking at parents as individuals and telling them that, boss, there is a lot. That's a Pandora of activities. It's fun. It's just not, oh, I'm a mom. Yes, mom is here. She has lots to do with you. I think that energy which is required for every mom and every dad is something which we really need to rekindle. And I hope, uh, and I, I, mean, I believe that you have been able to do that today. Yes, Mary, Thank you wanted to say something. I just have a last comment to share with you because as a mother now of adult children, I can tell young parents that it's a very fleeting experience, your parenting. So my invitation is to embrace it. Embrace it with all the love and joy that you have in, in your being because it goes so fast. <laughs> yes, I know. I, it's an experience and every moment is very very different it's 
it's freaky at times but it is fun even the freaky is fun you almost feel oh my dear i hope i am a parent but enjoying that the accident what you do as a parent also and getting over it and saying okay can we walk together is very very important because more than being a parent i think we are all humans and yes. we have to understand each other as human beings whether we are the little ones or whether we are the senior ones and that's what the family is walking the road together so good i think i'm i'm really happy with the what conversations and i hope the parents who are attending this webinar are quite inspired to go back home and search for the joy or not search i can say rediscover the joy which they have within themselves it's it's amazing so as you mentioned sara is now on the job with her yogas it is very interesting so we always relate yoga to you know the, the kind of postures which kids will never ever want i mean they would not be capable of doing it or um, it's it's too serious a job you know yoga is too serious but yoga is fun i mean that's what sara says sara does so sara has something which will come a little later to which is known as the go go yoga but she is very creative and she is a passionate teacher who has continued to inspire parents and children and she she has a lot of books in her kitty she has the books of written by her go go yoga for kids a complete guide for using yoga with kids she has written go go yoga for kids yoga lessons for children and go go yoga for kids yoga games and activities for children i'm i'm, I'm really impressed sara so sara holds a masters degree in education as well as a bachelor's degree in early childhood and elementary education she has invested countless hours creating and leading yoga games very very interesting and also movement i love movements so i think yoga is a beautiful form, form of movement for the kids and we have sara here she feels very strongly about having all the ideas strategies and lessons in place so that anyone who works with kids will be able to introduce yoga with confidence and with success so hello sara welcome to this program and i'm glad i'm very very happy that you could make it today and in, and you i'm sure you will show us and inspire us with a lot of activities which you have because all of us are bored sitting at home and the kids are bored sitting at home so how do we you know go about this is something which we are going to look from you so uh, i call upon you to talk a little bit about what you are going to have today in this what you have in your kitty to uh, show us today over to you sara yes yes so uh, thank you so much for having me and thank you to mary for that inspiration there i just i love that i love listening to that as well too as a mom of teenagers now i definitely agree that parenting is very fast it's very fleeting and you just want to make the most of every moment for sure yes and one way you can do that is with yoga and that is something that i am very passionate about um i didn't start off that way i I'm I'm a teacher of, of primary grades, elementary kids, and I've been a teacher for 21 years, and I, I love it. I can't imagine myself doing anything else. And so I didn't really um, come across yoga until about about 12 years ago. Um, at this time, I was um, running a lot of races and participating in triathlons and marathons, and really, really putting a lot of um, pressure on my body, a lot of um, a lot of injuries and aches and pains mentally and physically. I was just pushing myself too hard. And I thought, well, something's got to change here. My kids were young and little. I didn't have the energy to be the best mom that I wanted to be for them. And at school with my, um, with my students, I was, you know, dragging and I was tired and, and then I tried yoga and it was, everything that I needed, my mind calmed, my body healed. And I just kept wanting to learn more and more about this thing called yoga. And as I became um, more of a learner and a teacher of myself in it, I thought, well, I need to introduce this to kids. Kids can do this as well. It's not just for adults. I knew how wonderful I was feeling and just calm and, and just my flexibility was better um, as an adult than it ever was a, a kid and a teenager and a young adult. 
was amazing. And it wasn't that I was practicing yoga all day, every day. It was just from doing some simple postures and poses that was creating this flexibility and this mindfulness in my body. And so I, I started to look into and learn about how to teach yoga to children. And it's, um, it's been amazing what I have learned. Um, we know the benefits of yoga, you know, for adults, we've heard about that. We know, we know by now, um, it's really become more and more common yoga studios. You see them, um, popping up everywhere where 10 years ago, you did not see that. And yoga for kids now is becoming more and more popular too. And that's been really, really exciting. So I would love, yes, to show you some poses and talk to you about some activities and some games, if that's what you'd like to hear now. So uh, it's, it's interesting how you discovered uh, the magic of yoga. And as in India, we say that yoga is not only about doing the poses, it is about becoming one with whatever you're doing now. It may be just talking to you or maybe cooking in the morning or maybe going out with your kids when you're one with what you're doing it is yoga so how uh, how would you inculcate this uh, these principles in the children uh, are there different principles do we follow the same principles in yoga what is it yes 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 well you are exactly right yoga is it's the union of your mind and your body it's that together and wanting to introduce that to kids as an early age, you can definitely do that. Um, so like with, with adults, you know, they, they tell you to just breathe deeply and we're, you know, we're kind of able to do that. We can count to five and hold our breath and exhale slowly. But with kids, you kind of need to make it more fun and engaging. You need to, you know, make it more interesting so that they don't think that breathing is just boring. You want to make it fun. So with younger kids, we do a fun activity called birthday candle breath because all kids love their birthdays. They are so excited about them. They can't stop talking about their birthdays. So how you do that one is you would place your two index fingers together to make a little birthday candle. And then you would breathe in deeply through your nose and then exhale and then blow out your birthday candle like that. And that um, visualization is wonderful for kids to kind of understand the importance of taking that long inhale and that long exhale, which just clears your mind. It makes you feel good. It gets you more centered in the, in the moment. Um, another fun breathing exercise that I do with my school age kids, and I do this with my um, students at school, we call it the five finger breath. And so all the kids hold up their hand. And we also sometimes call it roller coaster breath because it would be kind of like a roller coaster. So as you breathe in, you would trace up the finger, up your finger, up your pinky, breathe in, breathe out on the exhale, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. And just that, um, that pairing that movement with your breath is, it's really powerful for kids. And after I do that with my students, they are just silent, they are calm, they are right back there with me because they had those five deep cleansing breaths like that. Um, another fun breathing exercise that is great to do with kids is kind of goes with birthday candle, it's balloon breathing. Kids love balloons. And so you would act like you're blowing up a big enormous balloon. So you would breathe in and you'd bring your hands up above your head like you're in the shape of a balloon. So breathe in and on the exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Now I had one student um, tell me, oh, but Miss Sarah, balloons kind of go crazy, you know, when they, when you let go of them, you blow it up and then you let go and it whizzes around the room. So we kind of added in, breathe in, breathe out, kind of with the balloon going crazy like that. So they think that's awfully fun. <laughs> so those are just a few breathing exercises to kind of get the mind calm centered. No, actually, I've start, I have started doing it with you. So when you're doing the finger, <laughs> I feel it. And I, I was doing it. So I'm sure the kids enjoy such little things because they're very innocent. And they connect with little activities very fast. It is not like adults who keep questioning. Oh, is that good? How will it affect me? Is that enough? They are not very inquisitive. And it comes very naturally to them. You know, mm -hmm. following instructions, following actions. And they love actions and they love to imagine, pretend, play. 
So I think this is a very good combination of all their in our mind body relationships, what we really look at therapists as. So what do you think are the very many benefits of teaching yoga in early childhood? Yes, yes. And you can start um, yoga with kids as young as a toddler age, two, three, that preschool age, four, five. You can start it as young as that. And what's neat about the yoga poses and the yoga postures is they have a lot of animal names as well. So I think about with the toddlers and the preschoolers, those young kids, you know, we're talking about, let's just say cat pose here. And so they're um, on their hands and knees, they're arching their back. And then, you know, they're, they're meowing too with it when they go into it. And that's, that's another way to work the breath. They're meowing into cat pose. And then the counter to that would be cow pose. Then they're relaxing their back and they're mooing. So they're kind of meowing and then mooing. So preschool kids, you know, the way yoga is, I mean, they definitely can um, do it. Another favorite one for this age would be moving into an up dog. Um, Cause that's another kind of an animal up dog like that. And we talk about how you're shining your heart with that. You know, you're a lot of times, you know, Mary, you mentioned how kids are just on screen so much, even at that young age, they are just playing the video games. They're looking at the iPad and they're kind of, they're becoming hunched. And this is even those three-year-olds and four-year-olds. And so with this up dog pose, this is just opening their heart you know their heart is open and it's willing and it's 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 a simple pose but you just really feel it in your body and then the counter to that would be down dog which is um a wonderful pose I like to tell my students that it makes you feel um taller because you have your hamstrings there and it's um you can feel your hamstrings working your legs working kind of strengthening and lengthening as well so um the thing about doing yoga with kids that are so young is so many of the poses that you learn about like tree pose, you know, kids can understand how that looks like a tree. They get that. And tree pose is wonderful for working that balance. That's a huge benefit with that. And with the younger kids, we talk about different levels. You know, they may not have their arms up above their head. You know, their foot may not be all the way up there by their knee. We talk about how um, it's different levels. Yoga is a practice. It's not anything that's ever perfected. You know, it's a practice. We're always learning and growing, all of us. I was kind of getting into the flow. Now let's do the (laughs) yoga exercises together. You know, it was coming to that. Because as you said, all of us, it's not only about the kids. And I keep telling the adults, is in the last year, because of sitting in the front of the laptop and not exercising your scapular muscles they have, we have all lost it unless few of us are doing the exercises and know what is the importance of having a good posture so having a good posture for children is so important not only for their body it's not only for the physical but also for the mental because as a sensory integration therapist i do understand the need for the posterior space awareness you know when they go into extension It's very important for them to go into extension and then go into flexion. So having both the flexion and the extension is very important for the brain. Going right and going to the left and going to the right and exchanging the energies, as we say, is so important. And I'm very happy that you have brought these uh, in a in a kid loving. So when, when I saw those cards, I said, hey, we can use that card for our kids as well. And it's so interesting. You made it really, really good. So do you think that there are some cases or conditions in which we cannot do this? Uh, uh, What are the contraindications or what are the, uh, maybe we should avoid or we should be really careful as parents and therapists that, okay, this should be avoided. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I think that all yoga poses can be modified in some way. You know, it's, you think about some of the postures you may see on, Instagram or on TV, you know, that's not really how it all always, always looks. Yoga looks different on everybody. Everyone's a different shape, a different size. So I'm always very, very mindful of that with my, with my students that yoga is going to look different with everyone. So I think that it it can be done. You know, it's as long as you are breathing and moving your body in good and healthy ways, you know, you're doing yoga. It, it, It definitely counts. That's wonderful. That's amazing. And I want, I would love to 
see you at work. I would like to see a few videos if it would enough. Send so maybe we can have some of the videos uh, also as a part of the yoga for unity programs because this program has is a hundred day program as we have introduced uh, to you and we are, this is one part section with the kids. It, it's a sort of a vacuum because it's empty because kids and yoga really does it exist and I'm very happy today that you have covered so many benefits. And you've also shown us that we can make it a fun activity for the kids. It is so, so amazing. So looking at the way forward, do you think that there are certain uh, points which we as parents should start the day with or maybe like, you know, like how I give a sensory diet to the parents? So do you think there are some yogasanas or poses which you think that the day should start with and it will create that instant energy? So it's like brushing teeth. Now let's start with this pose and this becomes the part. Or do you think that we can include poses which are different every day? Yeah, that is that is a great, a great question. I do think it is very helpful to have a little yoga routine in the morning and then at night. And it doesn't need to take, it can take just a few minutes. It is just doing a few of the poses. Um, and then you notice as you go into them, they become easier to do. Um, like one of my favorite um, like ways to start the day or at night would be in this child's pose. It's a very centering and grounding pose. Your your arms are outstretched, your um, your head's down. You're just kind of just deep breathing. You're just getting ready for your day or you're getting ready to end your day. And this kind of made me think too with Mary, with her um, her mantras that she talked about with the I am, you know, and how powerful those are because those do definitely go with yoga. And like this one, this one says, I am calm and centered. And that's how your pose, this pose makes you feel. So I, um, I, I would suggest, you know, starting with a little morning routine or a, um, a night routine, like a good morning pose is definitely like a mountain pose. It's a very energizing, waking up, um, you feel strong, you feel powerful. In mountain pose, your arms are up overhead, your heart is open, you're ready for the day. And then some of those evening poses will be more low to the ground, more of the um, like happy baby, a little boy doing happy baby. The kids love that one because they can think of their brothers and sisters and happy babies, how they kick their legs and more of the more of just um, bringing your heart, um, heart rate down, kind of the more centering, the more grounding poses. So do you want to show us a few poses or videos? I completely leave it up to your discretion. But uh, yeah. Definitely- yeah, I'm not sure if I would be able to right now with the setup and how that we are, but um, I'm definitely happy to though later on for sure show you some. So that's wonderful. We have had a good session with both of you and I'm glad to have this combined approach of the mind-body relationships in this 100-day yoga program which we have had. And I think this is a very unique session which we are covering for our little ones who are going to be the future of the world. I think all of us, in a little way, if we can contribute towards the wellness of our kids, everyone in the world, we would contribute towards making the world a better place for the little ones. And I'm very, very glad that both of you have done immense, immense work in this field And I love people who do this because I know I love the little ones. I love every little one who comes to me, especially the toddlers, because they are full of hope for the future. And what what we offer them today is going to, they're going to carry it with them and they're going to become what we are going to give them. Okay, this is something. So if you give them, it's like, okay, if you give them something, they're going to take it very innocently and say, oh, my mama has given it to me. So it's, it's, it's going to be cherished. So let us build beautiful moments for them and say, here is a beautiful tomorrow. So thank you for being on this show with us. And it's just the beginning. Okay, both of you, we have to walk the way together. And I'm looking forward to a wonderful journey together in heartfulness and looking at the kids in a beautiful way. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.